sure I cannot get people as excited as you already have. We use LabVIEW every day in our laboratory. Without it, we would be uh, severely hampered. Uh, I'll be talking about, uh, within the general topic of automation displays and sensors, I'll be talking about, uh, I guess my first slide disappeared. Uh, well, it's been changed. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, when you talk about uh, automation, uh, sensing, and displays, uh, each one of these uh, areas is related to artificial muscles or actuators in general. Uh, the uh, electro, for example, displays, Texas Instruments, uh, wonderful displays that are so important uh, uh, are related to actuated uh, um, actuation. Uh, electronic ink is, again, used as actuation. Uh, sensors, the uh, beautiful thing is, would be to have sensors and actuators integrated in an intelligent way so that uh, uh, they could be more effectively utilized. Now, uh, the area of actuation is much too broad for me to give a general overview. Uh, but what I like to talk about are what are the application opportunities, the problems, and how these problems can be solved. I won't be talking about all the problems or all the opportunities, just a very uh, uh, few items. Uh, one reason we need artificial muscles is indicated here. We have lots of people who have lost their limbs. Uh, wonderful things have been done already in terms of uh, communications from the brain uh, to nerves or even more directly to control artificial muscles. But the nature of the artificial muscles, I'm not sorry, the nature of the uh, uh, actuation devices that are used on artificial limbs right now is very primitive. They're usually motors or they're hydraulics. Uh, and this is indicated here uh, for an individual who's lost their limb. Uh, the problems are, one of the problems are that uh, motors and pneumatics of conventional actuation doesn't enable the degree of control uh, that is possible if you use just a material that can be as fine as a human hair, uh, that can be independently controlled. For example, in our body, we have about 630 skeletal muscles. And uh, uh, if you look at uh, the wonderful robot of Asimo, it has only 25 degrees of freedom. Uh, I met some beautiful women in Korea uh, that are, but you got closer and closer to them, you realize they weren't so beautiful. They just didn't have enough muscle in their, uh, in their faces to, to provide natural smiles. Uh, this idea of robotics uh, is, is extremely important. Uh, for partner robots that can help provide security, partnership. In Iraq, it, they found the very primitive, they don't look humanoid and old robots that helped the soldiers. Uh, when they were damaged, the soldier wanted a robot, not any robot, they wanted their original robot. They developed a personal connection. And as our society is aging, helper robots of all types will be very useful. And I'm getting pretty old myself already. Uh, another problem is uh, humanoid robots, as they're presently deployed, have a major limitation in if they act athletically, they have to be recharged in a very short time. For example, Honda's Asimo uh, ro uh, robot can climb stairs, pick up, uh, stand up if it falls, even play soccer. but. If it acts athletically, its batteries last only about 30 minutes. What, and similarly, uh, uh, Raytheon's uh, uh, exoskeleton, uh, if you notice the uh, uh, tail coming out of the soldier, it's plugged into a wall socket or a hydraulic lane. Uh, again, there, uh, you see in the hallways a beautiful uh, uh, exoskeleton from uh, Lockheed Martin uh, that, uh, quite impressive. But again, ultimately a problem is you can't put enough energy in a battery 
for uh, humanoid robots to operate very long without recharging. Uh, so, um, uh, the, for example, battery is, our bodies, you can give a soldier enough food in his rucksack to go out and uh, explore for a, a, a month. On the other hand, uh, uh, for the humanoid robot only uh, can pr perform actively for about 30 minutes. Uh, if you look at the energy densities of uh, most advanced lithium batteries compared to the amount of energy in methanol, you see there's about a 20-fold advantage in energy storage density uh, if you use uh, fuel-powered artificial muscles. Now, the, uh, uh, John Main from DARPA came to visit me and he says what he wanted uh, was fuel-powered artificial muscles for the robotic soldiers who could fight ahead of American soldiers, take the bullets for American soldiers, and then drink a shot of alcohol to fight on. This is what we tried, tried to provide for uh, uh, DARPA. We have two basic types of artificial muscles. One that's very, very scientifically exciting and one that works well. And I prefer to talk here about the one that works well. All we do is we take uh, nickel titanium shape memory wires, uh, coat them with a, pla a catalyst, and by how we bind this catalyst to shape memory wire is very important. If you expose this uh, 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 catalyst coated shape memory wire to a mixture of fuel and oxygen, uh, you can uh, develop about 150 megapascal of, uh, of, of, of stress, which is about 500 times that of natural muscle. The stroke's only about 4%, but we can magnify this to uh, five times that of natural muscle just by replacing the straight wire by helical coil. Uh, the applications for these, uh, uh, is this very simple type of fuel-powered fuel muscle could be artificial limbs, humanoid robots, morphing wings, and of course the exoskeletons. Uh, I'm, of course, from the University of Texas at Dallas. Education is job one. I'm so proud of the contributions that very young people have made in all of our programs, and especially our program on uh, uh, artificial muscles. This is, these are two heroes of Nanotech who started in our institute as Nano Explorer High School students. Uh, Carter Haynes today uh, is a, a co-author of a science paper which first appeared today. Uh, which is, uh, we have to do, handle a lot of press activity. Now, he found a way to dramatically extend the operating life of our fuel-powered artificial muscle. He discovered that you can just take the, deposit the platinum on the wire and then spirally wind a uh, uh, carbon nanotube sheets around these uh, coated uh, wire and, and thereby increase the cycle time from our original 5,000 cycles up to 50,000 cycles. He just got tired of watching the thing go up and down after 50,000 cycles. Uh, the power density, he was able to increase the power density in order of magnitude uh, uh, compared with our previous results and for skeletal muscles. This is, uh, Carter introduces our fuel-powered artificial muscle in an upcoming program uh, on NOVA. Uh, then I go over and introduce them to some people who are doing heavy lifting in our laboratory. We have initially have lab coats. They take off the lab coats, and uh, I talk about the wonders of natural muscle and say that if uh, these two people who can lift uh, 200 pounds, if they could have the strength of our artificial muscles, they could lift 50 tons. Of course, that's a little bit, they'd have to have equally strong bones. <laughs> uh, again, the types of artificial muscles that are possible is extremely broad. Uh, here we, we uh, described in a recent last year's article in uh, Science uh, uh, a type of artificial muscle that's based, based on a strange state of matter, carbon nanotube aerogels that are lighter than air but stronger pound per pound than steel that can give uh, provide strokes that are, are uh, uh, about 220% compared to the stroke of about maximum 40% for natural muscle. It can 
uh, provide stroke rates that are about a thousand times that of natural muscle. Uh, it can be operated at temperatures from absolute zero to at least 1900 degrees Kelvin. Uh, the application needs for artificial muscle. Ah, finally, they took, I see that there's a, this, a screen down here. I'm an old man, I can't see, everything gets fuzzy. <laughs> Uh, again, medical area is a very important uh, for, uh, has a very important needs for uh, actuation, improved actuation, uh, including artificial muscles, uh, where you're talking about truly minimally invasive surgery uh, that requires uh, robots, uh, robots or actuators on these different dimensional scales all the way down to uh, the nano size. Uh, we lot again. There are lots of type of uh, artificial muscles. I won't have talked about. I'll be able to talk about uh, some for patent reasons. We've been ex recently able to make uh, torsional artificial muscles that can spin up to 600 revolutions per minute, provide about a thousand times higher uh, uh, rotation per length than uh, previously known muscles. Uh, we're uh, right now working on making. Uh, uh, much more efficient uh, shape memory muscles, which are not thermally actuated. There, I'm only, I'm, in this short discussion, I have not been able to talk about the enorm enormous amount of exciting work that's going on everywhere in the world, and, but I hope you've enjoyed this short discussion. <laughs>